Hi, well, that's you. You beat me to it. Great to see you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and um, welcome in particular, that'll do it. Uh, welcome in particular, my subscribers, to your Aries May 2020 reading. I'm Nigel St. James, for those who have not met me before. Well, subscribers, we have the best family on the YouTube, don't we? We have great fun here, and I always look forward to seeing you each month, and I look forward to your comments and corresponding with you. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's the highlight of, uh, of my day very often to be able to um, converse with you. And, um, and of course, I've seen some of you with, uh, with private readings, and uh, it's been great to get to know you better. And of course, if you want a private reading, then just check out the details in the subscription. Anyway, today we're going to use a theme card, we're going to use some tarot, and we're going to use some um, some playing cards, probably for the last time for a, for a while, I think. Um, I just, I like the playing cards. I use them extensively in private readings, but uh, the, um, but the, the, the meanings which uh, come up from them in, from private readings are often very interesting for people. So let's get things underway. Sh there you are. So let's get things underway, shall we? Now uh, let's have a look and see what the theme is. Is anything jumping out? Is anything jumping out? <laughs> You know how this works? Well, I'm just going to pull something from in between here for you. Aries, return to country. Well, that's very interesting. Let's have a look now at the tarot. Now this tarot deck I picked up from a, an artist in San Francisco, a very talented uh, woman. And she has provided some lovely imagery on these cards. And so we shall see what messages they evoke for me to pass on to you. And let's have a look to see what there is first. The Five of Swords. The Six of Discs. The King of Staves. The Five of Staves. And these two, which do I feel is the better one? I'm getting this vibe here, so let's do this one. The Nine of Staves. Okay, it's them, and now what about a couple of these playing cards? Now the, Im the imagery on the playing cards is of, of uh, statues, really, and churches. Now, don't take anything negatively from that. Uh, I'm certainly not here selling religion, but I particularly like the, the, uh, the images that's on it, which is why I use this deck. And I very often use it in private readings. And in fact, there's a number of decks I use in private readings. One is a very old deck, which I've been using for about 30 years. So we'll see what this one has to say for us. We'll take three, shall we? The Queen of Hearts. Ah, that's you, I think. The Seven of Spades. And the Six of Clubs. All right, my beloved, why don't you come and sit down next to me and I'll do the reading for you. All right, Aries, let's have a look at these and see what they have to say for you now. Now look at this message that's coming through here. This is a card returned to country. And I'll tell you, the artwork is really Australian Aboriginal, indigenous artwork. Returning to country is when Aboriginal people return to where they were born and where their family's spiritual links are. It is often a wondrous event filled with joy, love and friendship from family. However, for those who return to a country in which they have limited or no connection, it can be a difficult journey to undertake. Return to country is a journey that exceeds the limits of time and is a spiritual journey. Returning the Aboriginal people to their dreaming. Now for you, you might consider what returning to country means for you. Now I can, I can imagine 
that it is, a, it is a time for you to be returning in upon yourself and who the real self of you is. Now you may say, who am I? Well, ask yourself the question, who am I? Take away the personality, and yet you're still you. Take away the clothes that you wear, and you are still you. Take away the material trappings that you have, and you are still you. Take away the physical flesh that you are encased in, and you are still you. And yet that real you, the essence of who you are, the spirit that is you, this is a time for you to return in on that and to contemplate who you are and what you are here to do. Now that being the case, let's have a look at this card here. I told you the artwork on this was rather interesting, didn't I? This is a card, which is the Five of Swords. Now you may say to yourself, ooh, the Five is difficult. Well, for me, the Five can sometimes be difficult. The Five, from a mystical, numerological sense, has a very deep connection with the planet of Mars, which can be very fiery and bring about exaggeration and change. This can sometimes be thought of, I think, as a card of fear. Now, why do I say that? Well, because the astrology for me is Venus ruling the first decan of Aquarius, that 22nd to the 29th of January. Now, Venus rules Taurus, doesn't it? Venus ruling Taurus. Well, Taurus is an Earth sign, but here, we have Venus ruling Aquarius in the card for me, which is an air sign. Now these two are at odds. Venus is a lover and not a fighter. Whereas Aquarius is really a rebel ruled by that unpredictable planet of Uranus. And Aquarius is also a fighter, usually for causes. So the individualistic and somewhat dispassionate nature of Aquarius clashes with Venus, the planet of deep relationship and closeness. I think what we have here is that Venus is, as I say, also overwhelmed by the fiery and dispassionate nature of Mars. So we don't really have astrological harmony in this card. This is a time when I don't think there is a great deal of astrological harmony. Now, as I say, the card is for me mainly about fear, I think. It's really the, the vibration that's coming through. That's its essential element. And that fear can distort your view of the present and of the unknown in your future. And this is in some way repeated, I think, in the symbology of the card. The Five of Swords can sometimes relate to a betrayal or a sneak attack by someone you trust and do not suspect as your enemy. They could be, well, I, I don't like to say it, but it could be an unfaithful partner, or you may hear of that, or a jealous person who is sabotaging you behind your back. Now, your fear may be the result of losing control emotionally due to previous hurts from relationships. Or it may be connected with the workplace where you've had a bad experience. And that stops you from expressing yourself fully because your confidence has been lost. If you can let go of the feeling of fear, then the energy which is bound up in this great trail of people here will be unleashed and work for your benefit. Now, although the suit of swords is mental, it's to do with the mind, and it's probably something of a bit of mental turmoil that you may be going through, it can relate to the emotions because of Venus's presence in the card as I as I see it. Venus, of course, is a lover, and in Aquarius, 
It's the card of the fighter. Do you know, there is a, um, a what I'd call a center of consciousness which is associated with this card. Aya Hell is the angel's name, which we call it. And there is a verse of the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, the book of Psalms, and I'm pretty sure it's chapter 119, verse 159, that says, See that I have loved your precepts, O Lord. Preserve me as befits your steadfast love. Now, meditating on that will bring a desire to steadfastly and respectfully share your wisdom with those younger around you and probably children. And the preacher in you will be silenced and the teacher in you will awaken and shine in all of your actions. There is something else that I want to say here, and I think it's important to be said in relation to this card because it can, it can, this feeling of fear, almost defeatism, it can result from maybe ways in which we we've, we've, think we've let people down. Let me say this. Despite what you may believe, you can disappoint people and still be good enough. You can make mistakes and still be capable and talented. You can let people down and still be worthwhile and deserving of love. Everybody has disappointed someone they care about. Everybody messes up or lets people down makes mistakes, not because we are inadequate or fundamentally inept, but because we are imperfect and fundamentally human and expecting anything different is setting yourself up for failure. Because remember, nobody is perfect. Let's see what there is next. Oh, there's another five down here. So let's have a look at it. The five of staves. Now this might ordinarily be called the five of wands, but don't they look as if they are al alive? Well, the five of staves is Saturn in the first decan of Leo, the 23rd of July to the 2nd of August. Now, I have to say that Really, when I've looked at this over the years, Saturn and Leo don't really get on well with one another because Leo wants to be creative and express itself while Saturn is cold, dense, and wants to set boundaries and limits. Now, Leo here is in a fire sign. Wands is... It, well, Leo is a fire sign, and it's in a fire suit. Wands, of course, being a suit of fire. So, added to by the energy of Mars, because, again, I have Mars associated with the number five, we have a picture where Saturn comes in and wants to damp down all of this. So, there is... Again, astro the astrological energies are in discord. Five, as I say, can refer to instability, exaggeration, strife, changes. Sometimes there can be loss associated with things when the number five appears. Let's pull it out a bit so we can see it in the context of the others, shall we? I'd say this, you might be in the middle of a conflict, a tension, or a competition, and it's, it's impacting your ability to move forward with your goals. Now, sometimes, of course, conflicts can be positive because they, they require us to put our best foot forward, to make the best of ourselves. Well, this five of staves often points to competition with people who have similar qualities and experiences to you. They may look like you. They may be as attractive as you. They may have the same sort of intellectual qualities that you do. Now, you may not have had to face the fire of competition before, 
But I think now that you will, and you will learn what competition means, and in particular, what competition requires. The Five of Wands encourages you, I think, to also make an effort to understand the differences between people's cultures, backgrounds, and opinions. It makes you more rounded and wise. The competition I see that you have here is going to be sorted out within a period of five months, I think. Again, there is a center of consciousness associated with this, Jerithel, and I again go back to the book of Psalms, chapter 140, verse 2, which says, Rescue me, O Lord, from evil men. Save me from the lawless. Now, meditating on that removes the dark force's presence from your earnings and its destructive influence from your life. The light is now your silent partner. You will be surrounded by protection. I have this suggestion, and it is to go step by step. Take everything a little easier. I have this thought in mind as well. I am more and more capable now of expressing my feelings and my creativity in work. Yeah. In this situation, the danger of resigning yourself is great. Saturn really reminds you that all things must be taken care of step by step, but don't let yourself be overwhelmed. Always look again to the flames which make up the suit of wands, which burn on despite impediments. And when you draw this card as you have done, it is a sign that you are ready to face the situation and to do something about it. Good for you, good for you. Where shall we go? Oh, we have such good things here. Let's have a look at the king of staves, seeing as we were talking about staves. Yes, the king of staves, the lord of flames and lightning, the king of the spirits of fire. Do you know, I see a lot of Sagittarius around this and also a lot of Scorpio around here. So I think that you are going to have dealings with Sagittarians and Scorpios. I think if I was to try and work out what his moral qualities were, I'd say that this is a man. And there can sometimes be women, of course. The court cards are gender neutral. A person of activity, generosity, quite impetuous, quite proud, very swift in their action, but their actions can sometimes be can be uh, unpredictable. And there's a degree of fierceness which is associated with, with them here too. I think what this is saying to me though is that there could well be some startling, perilous, or sort of revolutionary kind of elements contained in the events around you. But you should be cool, collected, resolute, and energetic and be careful of the actions that you take, nothing that isn't well thought out, but go forward with an alert confidence in your ability. This king here, whatever his moral qualities are, as I say, he's really ill-fitted to carry on his actions once he's, once he's, um, he's very, he's, he's the fiery part of fire in an elemental sense. And so he's unable to modify his actions according to circumstances. It's almost as if he has one bullet in the barrel and he shoots that bullet and that's it. He's done everything. But this is about you finding your vitality, trusting your gut instincts, letting your hair down, give yourself a pep talk, believe that you can do it. Now, as an event that's around you, you may well be involved in a journey or some sort of travel, and it may well be a change of job, but possibly even a promotion for people who are in the workplace. I think your creative ideas are going to be brought into action and you are going to have the courage of your convictions. Now, kind of seek out situations and opportunities that challenge you and engage them with all of your energy and have this thought in mind. Every challenge which arises helps me grow. Every storm strengthens my roots. I might deal with this nine of staves. Now again, staying with the save suit. This is such a great card to finish with, incidentally, this six of discs. 
I'll give too much away now. now. Let's have a look at this. The Nine of Wands, well, the Lord of Great Strength. It is the moon ruling the second decan of Sagittarius. And the Nine, for me, mystically, is also associated with the moon. So we have a double lunar influence as the moon is ruling both the astrology, the moon ruling the second decan of Sagittarius, and the moon being associated with the number, number nine. So I think what we have here is that great determination and strength of character will be had by you, courage under fire, defending what you have worked for, and I think a great belief in yourself. And you should have a belief in yourself. I mean, you are the poster child of the Zodiac, are you not? I think what we can also say about this card here is that this is about long acting endurance, reaching into yourself, that's the moon, reaching into yourself and discovering new depths of strength and power that you probably thought you never had. Now, you may encounter obstacles, but you will have the strength to overcome them. And when this card comes up in this position, with this card above it, you can be reassured that you have what it takes to get by, even in times of difficulty and stress. Inner strength is going to rise up and guide you towards your goal. And in the process, you're going to learn more about yourself and your abilities. And you're going to gain a new all-round perspective, which brings you security and self-confidence. Now, pay attention to your dreams at this time. Dreams can often be quite insightful as to what is going on. Have this thought in mind, and it is, I know more and more clearly who I am. This recognition leads to the full development of my potential strength. You are in the process of discovering your real strength. Trust your inner guide. Yeah. You may be a little bit afraid of your own strength. Who knows? Let's have a look at this. Is that in focus? Well, quite coincidentally, here we have the moon again, the moon ruling the second decan of Taurus, the first of the 10th of May. This card is the Lord of material success for me. Now the moon ruling Taurus, the moon is exalted in Taurus in ordinary astrology, which is a good sign, but the moon's transient nature means that success may be short lived. Well, there's nothing wrong with that because success is not a continuum, is it? You have a success, you have another success, you have one here, you have one there, you have one there. It's not, it's not something which is just around all the time. The moon in Taurus, well, the moon likes nurturing and comfort and Taurus likes the material things. So they're really well suited for one another and they're well suited for bringing about material success. So I do see here success and generosity both ways, paying it forward, receiving something of a financial boost, I think. If those of you who are looking to get a scholarship, I think that's liable to be well received. And of those who are dealing with the welfare system, I think there's going to be a, a good outcome with respect to the welfare system. Now this is talking about material success. That is, what is material success for you? Now don't say it's 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 Bill Gates or or uh, the Tata family type of uh, wealth that's coming around. But it may well be that you have the opportunity to be involved in a profitable adventure, and it's a reminder for you to remember the successes in your life and to build on those. You know, very often, don't we? We we look to see, listen, what I need to do is I want to go up onto this mountain top over here because there I'll find success and so I need to climb this mountain up here. But you forget, you already stand on top of a mountain of your own successes, experience and qualities which have been built up. And so the journey is not one of going up. The journey is very often one of just going across or even of, of a downhill ride to it. 
So remember that always. There's going to be the desire for success for you. And what I would say to you here is that you need to be willing to take risk, to be committed, to trust your intuition. Visualize as precisely as possible what your success looks like. And say this to yourself, that my self-acceptance and self-confidence are the keys to real success. Let's have a look at these playing cards. As I say, this might be the last time we see playing cards for a while because the decks I'll use over the next couple of months might take longer to get through. And what do we have here? Here we have the Queen of Hearts. Well, this generally I would call the Goddess of Love. Now this can be an indicator of marriage, so you may well hear of marriage. It can refer to someone who is a devoted mother, or a pregnant woman, or a passionate lover, or even romantic fantasies that you are pursuing at the present time. What it does say, though, to me is, and, and you take this the right way, but if you are in happy, committed relationships, or even in a happy, shorter-term relationships, you're going to be very good between the sheets, if I can put it that way. We have here the Seven of Spades. Why don't you, you come over here and I can see you. Yeah, sevens, well, numerologically for me, sevens very much are about internalizing things, introspection, thoughts, introspection. There is here, I think, that um, I've very often seen it in spreads that I do in psychic readings, depending on the layout and, of, of the cards all around it, because I use about 20 or more of them at the time. But it can represent the uncovering of a truth, a removal or a loss of some kind. And I would say this, to be very careful of advice that you are given at present, because that could be that could lead to loss. It can sometimes refer to a loss of a, of a friendship. And, um, and it uh, talks about making sure that you avoid arguments with friends. Now, it can also refer to the loss of a relationship. Let's have a look at this six of clubs. Look, in summary, the sixes for me can really refer to transitions, things being left behind, new things to do, commitment, moving to higher ground. When this card appears, your intuition will be stronger than ever. And in fact, didn't we have the, the counsel from these tarot cards that this is a really a time when you will be relying on your intuition? But it's certainly a time for happy meetings. And, uh, and very much uh, business deals can be done at the present. Now, I know that things seem rather grim in a commercial sense out there, but business deals can be done and it's good for sales, good for people involved in selling. Education may be being sought or is currently ongoing. And this is a card which speaks, in general, of improvements in romance, friendship, or career. Those things are on the horizon for you at the moment. Well, that's the way it is for you this month. Well, there we go, May 2020, and I really enjoyed doing that reading for you, and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did. Do you know you were fantastic during that reading, as you always are? And the only thing that's left for me to say really is this, and that is that you are a legend, and I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, bye for now.